Uh, as you all know by now, Steve Paris and I, along with Marty, Marty Singer, California, representing the Tui family, as a, uh, as a result of a petition filed by Michael Orr. Um, 48 hours ago, a bomb dropped on our clients. Uh, to say they were devastated by these allegations uh, is truly an understatement. Uh, Sean and Leanne, uh, for my money, are salt of the earth. Uh, they would never do anything to deprive Michael of anything that was his. And uh, they remain devastated. It's going to take them a while to, to come around and get to where they need to be. Um, as it relates to the allegations, this lawsuit, this petition, was built around an alleged fact that Mr. Orr did not know that he was not the adoptive son of the Tuies, but rather there was a conservatorship. He alleges he just found that out in February of 2023. Fact of the matter is, he wrote a book in 2011, and in 2011, he acknowledged in that book on three separate occasions in that book that, he, that there was, in fact, a conservatorship. The Tuies have treated him and taken him in like a son. They have fed him. They have clothed him. They sent him to school. They made certain he had an automobile. Uh, they've done for him like they've done for their other children. Uh, and I think Sean said it best that he still loves him today at age 37 like he did when he was 16. Uh, I am at a loss, as is Mr. Faris and Mr. Singer and everybody else associated with the Tuies as to why or how uh, he has come to the position he's come to but uh, he has. Court of law is no place to play. This is, a, this is basically a lawsuit. As it relates to a conservatorship, that order was entered in December, December 7th, 2004. National Signing Day that year, the following year, was in February, it was on February the 2nd of 2005. So he had a pretty short window. Uh, we all know, know that Orr was a tremendous uh, lineman, great player, great, uh, great history that he's made for himself on the, on the football field. The, uh, at the time, and I might be wrong about this, you might check the stats of your sports guys, I think there were three schools in the running. Came down to Ole Miss, Tennessee, and LSU. And I, Again, I could be wrong about that. I wouldn't put my hand on the Bible and swear to that, but I think that's right. The only way, the only way, given the NCAA rules at the time back in 2005 that he could sign with, with Ole Miss is he became, according to the NCAA, as part of the family. Uh, they sought legal counsel, uh, and basically, they wanted to give him the opportunity to choose wherever he wanted to go, including Ole Miss. He was not told to go to Ole Miss. That was his choice. Uh, but in order to get that done, they had to make him, as I say, part of the family. That's the route they chose. You had a very short period of time between the time that that occurred and National Signing Day. Um, and I think uh, the rest is history as it relates to football. Um, with that, I'm going to ask Mr. Faris, my dear friend and colleague, to make a few comments. One of the uh, things that uh, needs to be kept in mind in this particular case, when we're talking about a conservatorship, we're not talking about high-profile Hollywood cases. We're talking about a family trying to help someone in need. Uh, the Tuies did not control any of Mr. Orr's 
finances. Mr. Orr picked his own agent. When he signed pro, Mr. Orr signed his own contract and negotiated it through his agents. In fact, he went through a total of three agents. Uh, the two he said recommended one agent, but he decided to go with another one. He became dissatisfied with that agent, hired another one, became dissatisfied with that agent, and then hired another agent that was recommended by the Tuis. They did not share in his monies. They did not control any shoe contracts, anything of that nature. The Tuis treated him like a son. They loved him. And believe you me, there are more expenses to college than just getting a scholarship. And they provided not only financially, but the love and affection that parents should give. And they were able to give it. They don't need his money. They didn't, they've never needed his money. Mr. Tui sold his company for $220 million. He didn't need Mr. Orr's money. This is a sad day. It's devastating to the family, and we hope that it doesn't have a chilling effect on others who want to help needy individuals. Question. Uh, Mr. Singer said in his statement yesterday that Orr has previously done this and, and threatened negative press on the family if they didn't give him $15 million. Can you speak about that, kind of what happened with that before? Well, simply we believe that to be correct and will be uh, shown in court through text messages. Who was representing the Jews at the time when it was going on, do you know? I was. So can you speak a little more how that got disposed of? Is it still going on? What happened in that matter? Uh, I don't understand your question. So, so I mean, what, so how did that eventually, when he came before and threatened his money and threatened the negative press? We said we're not going to be uh, strong-armed. We haven't done anything. Uh, we're not going to uh, be extorted. Why wasn't the conservatorship ended earlier? <laughs> He's 37 years old. Well, let me answer that. He was, these, they were appointed conservator of the person. There was no estate for which to file accounting for, and frankly, nobody even thought about it. He did all of his own finances, as Steve said. He entered his own contracts. He had his own agents. And frankly, nobody even thought about it. The two of have said on the record more than once since this started some 48 hours ago, they'll be glad to enter whatever order they want to terminate the conservatorship. Why wasn't he adopted back then? It didn't make any difference to the two there was There was one way, there was one thing to accomplish, and that was to make him part of the family so that the NCAA would be satisfied because Sean would have been uh, a booster of the university. We've all seen that with our own University of Memphis and uh, Coach Hardaway. But uh, that was the reason. Daniel Wilkerson, Fox 13. Can you give me an estimate as to how much money the two weeks have made off of the blind side, the movie, uh, versus how much Orr has made off of that movie? Sure. Go ahead, Steve. Well, they've all, um, each member of the family has received the same amount of money. So imagine a pie divided by five, okay? Uh, we estimate each person received $100,000, each person in the family. Including Mr. Orr? Correct. Including Mr. Orr? Correct. And that money, did, did it come directly to the Tuohys and then they divvied it up and gave Mr. Orr his portion? That's correct. Let me go on to amplify that. After, as we know, in 2004, in those years, as a as an NCAA athlete, he couldn't earn any money. He couldn't have, you know, he couldn't have a job. He was straddled by the NCAA rules. So after that was over, Tui offered to CCA, I think it's called, well, go ahead and send Michael's check directly to him. Well, they had to do a whole rigmarole. They confronted Michael with it. He, he suggested just leave it like it is. And every time Sean would get a check, He'd take a picture of it, he'd send it to Michael and send him a check. So Michael got every dime, every dime he had coming. And they paid the taxes on it 
for him. So um, when it comes to a trust fund set up for Michael's children, are there multiple trust funds set up? There was mention of that in, um, I believe, the statement given by the attorney for the family. There was one trust fund set up for Michael Jr. By the? Tuies. Because Michael Orr would not accept the checks. What do you, why do you think Michael Orr has made these allegations? What do you think is behind it? We don't know. One thing I wanted to ask, I was talking to a lawyer earlier today, typically when a conservatorship is set up, there's a GAL, or I think it was called guardian at light, who help act as a point person for people like Michael, but there wasn't any mention of that in the petition. What is this true? Was there no GAL? I mean, it's funny you asked that. We were just looking at that. The GAL was waived by Judge Bennett. He waived the requirement of a GAL. Uh, remember this, Michael was 18, he was a party to the petition. His mother was there. And Judge Benham saw fit to waive the appointment of a guardian of the law. What has the relationship been like between Michael and the Tuies in more recent years? Have they been in close contact? Has he still been, quote, unquote, part of the family? Or have they been a little more estranged? No, he's, he's been estranged since then, uh, probably for the last 10 years or so. Uh, and becoming more and more vocal and more and more threatening. So uh, in the original filing too, Mr. Orr says that he, um, there's a document, a contract sign where it basically strips him of his rights and his name rights and where he doesn't get any money out of anything coming. Um, but he's not sure if his signature is the one on the document and doesn't remember signing it. Is there a response to that? It's patently false. Uh, he's, he's negotiated his own contract with the NFL He's hired and fired agents. The Tuies have never had to sign off on any of that. He's done that all himself. Is, is that just like, is that typically how it worked with a conservatorship, or are they working around the conservatorship in terms of the negotiations that he did on his own with the NFL, shoe deals, et cetera? Well, generally, all depending on what the circumstances are. Remember, this conservatorship was set up for the purpose that I indicated earlier, so that if he chose to go to Ole Miss, there would not be an issue about Sean being a booster. And that was the sole reason. And after that got done, nobody really gave a damn. So typically, uh, there might well be the requirement of a conservator to execute a contract. Okay, but in this case, he executed his own, and nobody ever objected to it. Certainly, the Tuies didn't object to it. They didn't want to know part of his money. They would have done anything to help him had he needed them to. But he he negotiated his own deals and made his own money and. Uh, I think he made $34, $35 million playing right tackle in football. Just so I'm clear, it was $100,000, not two hundred two twenty dollars that he was given for. We believe it to be $100,000 per person, five shares. And just, and so, and that was when the movie initially came out. Were there any more funds when this movie is in DVD sales and other, as, any well, other as, checks? Over? As time goes on, I expect there may be additional revenues. So how much revenue did the two weeks make all the appearances? Did we do it As I that? indicated, 100000 per person, approximately. I'm guessing at it, but it's right around that number. But that was for the contract. They also got 2.5% of the net proceedings, right? So that's, what? that's where the money comes from. Okay. So the 100000 is both the initial, whatever, it's 14000 or whatever that was, plus your estimating. If you all the checks that have come total the 100000 right, right? Yeah, remember, this is, this is 48 hours old, so I don't... Right have the numbers at the tip of my that's, tongue, but that's... It, it's over the span of time. Yeah, I believe that, I believe that to be correct. My the reason why we didn't have this come more to the forefront earlier when the movie came out, a big part of that was that you adopted. Why was this now that's coming to I, I didn't understand your question. What did you say? So, one thing that some of my uh, co-workers were wondering is that a big part of the movie made it seem like he was adopted, and that was a big part of it. Why did it take so long from when that was going around and when that was making money to conservatorship coming out even in 2011? Well, uh, you know, even in the movie, I think there were reference to a conservatorship. I don't think there was a reference to an adoption. In the movie. But to your point, they always treated him as a son. They took him into the family. They did all the things that you would do for a son. So, you know, why, why 2023 when he acknowledged in 2011 uh, that there was a need of conservatorship? I, you'll have to ask Mr. Orr that. 
So, Mr. Orr, also, so in, in addition to ending the conservatorship, looks like he's also looking to get, you know, kind of back pay from what he thinks he's owed over time. Has he presented a figure to the two as to what he's looking for? Mm -hmm. No. Would you be glad, uh, in addition to dissolving the conservatorship, to have an accounting of? Yeah, he's asked for an accounting. That'll be a pretty simple process, I expect. Would you mind taking a step uh, closer to the microphones? We're having. Some 